Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Nerdy Multiverse and yet another breakdown. As today, we will be breaking down and giving our initial thoughts on the second episode of the newest and most anticipated Walking Dead spinoff series. Following Michonne in her search for Rick Grimes, and of course, following Rick Grimes himself while he tries to coincide and eventually escape the grasp of the CRM. Of course being The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live. And the second episode being titled, Gone. The title of this episode goes along with the first episode's title being Years. And both of them will be going along with the third episode's title, which is meant to be By. So, Years Gone By altogether. Which is also a reference to the original show's pilot episode being titled, Days Gone By. As the first episode saw us catching up with Rick Grimes and everything he has done over the past few years, this episode does the same thing, but focuses entirely on Michonne instead. So let's begin. As this episode starts off with Michonne meeting with the leader of the group that she encountered all the way back in season 10 of the original series in her very last episode, when she came across and rescued the characters of Aiden and Bailey. And yes, that is King Batch, the famous YouTuber that plays Aiden in this. We end up learning that this group and its leader mainly are perfectly fine with leaving people behind, no matter who they are, which is why Michonne found Aiden and Bailey. As they have this sort of motto of just keep going and keep moving, no matter what. You could say it's almost like an animal herd. Michonne hears this and is immediately fine with just leaving as she just wants to get back to searching for Rick either way. So she ends up meeting Nat, who is also sick of this group he's a part of and them leaving people behind. So she is given a horse to continue her search. They get her some brand new gear and she goes on her way. However, she does not make it very far as she encounters a gigantic horde of walkers. She begins firing rockets at them, but as a gas man walker that is lit on fire approaches her, it explodes and knocks her off of her horse, causing the horde's attention to then be turned to Michonne. But then, the horde is kept away and separated as Aiden, Bailey, and Nat use some sort of smoke columns to distract them. They have decided to finally leave their group behind and others have also joined them. Now, as far as the horde goes, I'm thinking these hordes and the ones mentioned by Nat earlier as well are possibly connected to the CRM themselves. As we know from World Beyond, the CRM has columns, which are huge hordes, and they basically weaponize them and control where they go, which is why Omaha got overrun. However, once they get going on their journey and make their way through a rundown city, after Nat tells Michonne some stories of his life, a CRM helicopter flies over the group, spins around, and begins dropping chlorine gas bombs on everyone, killing off and turning almost the entire group of travelers, and very quickly. After heading into an old furniture store for safety, Michonne heads out to find supplies and oxygen for herself and the others to help Help them recover from the bombs, only to come back to her friend Bailey, turned, as well as Aiden, forcing her to put them down. But Nat is still alive, so that is good. The two spend what is likely to be years in this building recovering from their injuries and sickness, but finally healed up and recovered, they are ready to head out and continue their search for Rick together from a large group to now only a duo. As the two head towards Bridger's terminal, Michonne uses her OG Walker tactic, where she cuts its arms off and jaw off and makes it carry their stuff for her. They finally arrive at Bridger's terminal, only for it to be in ruins and dozens of bodies to be piled up and burnt, likely done by the CRM again. Michonne spends hours and hours looking at each pile of bodies for Rick, even if they're unidentifiable, after she sits down with Rick's boots in hand and holds on to them, as she begins to think and accept that Rick may in fact just be gone. But Nat is here as a true friend and comforts her, telling her to believe just a little bit longer, which is actually what Rick's phone drawings read off. They eventually decide to head back to Alexandria 
Alexandria and back to Judith and RJ and everybody else, but still to hold on to that belief that Rick is still out there. Now, in present time, as they get nearly close enough to contact Judith through the walkie-talkie, a CRM helicopter approaches their location, and the two not wanting to be attacked with their chemicals once again, and wanting to take vengeance on this group for what they did to their friends, they shoot it down and take out the soldiers. And this is exactly where we left off with the last episode, as Michonne removes the CRM soldiers' helmets and tells them to look at her as she finishes them off super cold. But again, she removes Rick's helmet and stops herself as the two finally reunite after all of these years. A very loving and emotional moment. But it won't last long as Rick states that there are more coming and Michonne will need to lie about who she is and where she came from and head back with them. Nat interrupts the two and finds out that the two have found each other only to be shot from behind by a surviving CRM soldier. As Rick heads off to finish the soldier off, Michonne comforts Nat as he takes his last few breaths. Just as Okafor, Nat was another absolutely incredible one episode character, and his death was pretty sad. Rick takes all of Michonne's things that may point back to her being from Alexandria or that area and plants her katana in Nat's hands, so that the CRM do not suspect anything holding Michonne at gunpoint to make it look as if he has captured her. As the helicopters approach the two, Michonne smiles at the helicopter with her hands in the air, an exact mirror of the shots we got of Rick in the last scenes in the original series when he was recaptured. Now both of them are within the CRM ranks as Michonne now goes by the name of Dana to hide her true identity and makes up everything about her past using pieces from everyone else she has met along the way, such as Nat, Bailey, and and Aiden, but also who I think is Morgan Jones, as she does mention her main weapon of choice was a bow staff, and the only person that she knew that used a bow staff was Morgan. She will have to pretend to be what the CRM labels as a B, even though just as Rick, she is truly an A. As Michonne makes her way through the CRM base, now as a consignee herself, she is grabbed and taken inside a building by Rick in uniform, and they catch up a bit more. Michonne finds out about Rick losing his hand and then begins asking if they can win and beat the CRM and truly get away. Rick is usually keen on beating those that oppress other groups and his family and groups that are evil, but he actually says no here. They can't stop them and even if they tried to, they would never make it back home. And you know, this makes a lot of sense, especially knowing and seeing the power that the CRM possesses. They have access to chemical weapons and anything and everything military alike, such as tanks, Humvees, and of course helicopters. As we see as Michonne overlooks the base, holding on to Nat's old danger lighter. But of course, this plan of Rick and Michonne's cannot continue on without any issues arising as a mysterious figure watches over the recording of Michonne's interview and shuts it off to then head inside of Rick's own apartment room and wait for him to return. And once he does get back to his room, none other than Jadis or Anne greets him. As we know, she went by many different names and many different personalities in the original series, hiding her true identity and her true intentions and personality. She tells him that she's aware of Michonne presence now, but she will keep it between them as she has other things. But she assures him that this is not a part of some long-term deal, and that if Rick tries to escape with Michonne, she will make sure that everyone back at home that they love will be killed, even the ones that Jadis herself likes. Of course, here she is likely referring to people like Gabriel and Morgan, as she had a relationship with Gabriel for some time, even though she did a 
eventually capture him and try to trade him to the CRM itself. She also spent some time with Morgan before he decided to leave and go to fear. She says that her hands are already bloody enough and they cannot get any bloodier. This is likely referring to all of the people she betrayed during the original series, but also the deaths of her entire group she led at the trash landfill. Rick has no words yet, but you can tell that he is absolutely furious, but also scared. Jadis has one question for Rick as she questions what he is doing as the two stare at each other and face off the episode episode ends off. And overall, wow, was this another absolutely incredible episode. This show has been nothing but mind-blowingly good so far, and the acting performances have been amazing. Denai Guerrera as Michonne in this episode was truly, truly impressive. And within two episodes, we have had a very few short-lived characters, such as Okafor and now Nat, and both of which have grown to be fan favorites. And that's because the writing and storytelling of the show and these characters so far has been super good in my opinion. The action, the dialogue, and of course the overall acting once again was just amazing. And the Rick and Michonne reunion was absolutely beautiful and really emotional. This episode was yet another easy 10 out of 10 for me and I absolutely loved it and I seriously cannot wait for the third episode next week. I'm very, very curious to see where we head next now that Jadis is involved and very clearly a villain type of role, and both Rick and Michonne are now within the CRM's ranks. One, a high-ranking soldier, and the other being a new consignee. Now, obviously, it's not a complaint or anything, more of just a hope and perhaps a prediction for the future. But something I wish happened in this episode, or hopefully happens in a later episode this season, with more scenes with the walkie-talkies, if there are going to be any more, is I hope one of them ends up actually going off and we hear none other than Morgan Jones' voice. His last episode in Fear the Walking Dead saw him speaking through a walkie, trying to reach Rick, as he too is going to come looking for his old friend, as he said, and we have yet to have a connection between that scene and anything else. But anyways, I think that's about it for this episode, from me at least. But of course, I would like to hear about your thoughts on the episode as well, so make sure to leave them down below. And with that being said, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed our breakdown and review on this episode, don't forget to give it a like. And with that being said, we will see you all the next time that we go through and explore the nerdy multiverse.